We'll now have prayer by one of our deaconess. Oh, Sister Mary Oakley. Amen. Good morning, Neapsco. Good morning. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Except I beseech thee the free will offerings of my mouth, O mm -hmm. Lord, and teach me thy judgments. Mm -hmm. Most holy Heavenly Father, just coming to you, Lord God, this morning in humble contrite prayer. Lord God, we thank you, Father God, for this day. We thank you for the many blessings of this day, Father God. We thank you for all that you continue to do in our lives as you continue to lead, guide, and direct us with your word, Father God. We ask you just to order our service according to you, Lord God, that you get the glory, that you get the honor, and that you get the praise. Let everything that we do, everything we say, and everything we think, Father, be pleasing in thy sight, Father God. We ask blessings over Neapsco Baptist as a whole, mm -hmm. starting with our head, our pastor, Lord God, who have yes, you appointed to, to come and teach and lead and guide us according to your word, Lord God. We ask blessings over his entire family as well, Lord God, and we ask you just to continue to bless Neapsco and keep us in your, Please, your order, Lord Lord God, and the things that we do, the things we say, and the things we think may yes, be pleasing Lord. unto you. We give you glory and honor. honor. In the holy, matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, please remain standing as we have a praise song from our men's chorus. Number 547 in your hymnals. How to reach the masses, men of every bird, for an answer, Jesus gave the key. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Lift up the Savior, lift him up.
our responsive reading by Minister uh, Riddick. Okay, this morning, our responsive reading will be coming from Joy 26. You can find it in the sound book up front, or you can read it on the uh, stream. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at it risen, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith producing endurance. Look into Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of joy that was set before him endured the cross. Together, disregarding its chains, and had taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God.
Okay. We'll now have our announcements by Sister Barbara Carvin. Good morning. First, I just want to give an awesome thank you for the 2019 Women's Retreat Committee. What a wonderful, outstanding job you did. We were truly, truly blessed. You know, normally the announcements that go out on the weekly events, we talk about the other activities ongoing throughout the community at other churches. But we want to make sure the Abisco Baptist Church are aware of this awesome thing that's happening right here in the state of Virginia. There's going to be an Amazon Career Day. Amazon wants to add 30,000 people to its workforce this month and is putting a major hiring events. One would be in Arlington, Virginia, and they are hiring for permanent jobs that range in experience from entry level to computer uh, scientists. There would be full and part-time jobs. Pay starts at the minimum wage is $15 per hour. The company is also gearing up for the holiday season for hiring uh, teens and uh, tons of thousands part-time seasonal roles across the country. Those interested can register for the career day. Just go to Amazon.com and you should see a, a tab that says career day and register and that way you will find out more information. Another announcement that normally would go out is for um, one of our Delta sorority sisters here. She wants to make sure that the Abisco Baptist Church girls have a wonderful opportunity. And they have a Delta Academy 2019-2020 orientation. It's going to be this upcoming Saturday, September 21st at 1030. The purpose of the Delta Academy is they provide an opportunity to enrich and enhance the life of participants through service learning, leadership, skill building, and cultivating and maintaining relationships. It's for young ladies between the ages of 11 and 14 years old. And at this way, uh, it's going to be held at the Central Community Library in Manassas, Virginia. They also have a website here, but the representative here, uh, Sister Gola Austin, if you have any questions about your daughters, please see her after morning worship today, because she wanted to make sure that the Amsco Baptist Church girls had an opportunity to do this. And now for our church announcements. This upcoming weekend is a men's retreat. Uh, it's going to be at the National Conference Center. Their theme is <clears throat> Men Sacrificing All for Jesus Christ, Romans 12, 1 and 2. So um, today, following the morning worship service, all the men who plan to attend the men's retreat, they would like for you to meet them downstairs in the lower level for a meeting of your upcoming retreat. The Board Directors Nomination Committee, Deacon Mike Austin, is chairing the committee and it will assist the election of members to serve on the board beginning in 2020. Members that would like to serve, you need to contact him today or no later than the 22nd of September. The annual Usher's Day program, 22nd September, 3 o'clock p.m. Um, the AFSCO would be celebrating their day in the 3 o'clock p.m. Guest minister would be Reverend Dr. Harold Stinger, pastor of First Mount Olive Baptist Church in Leesburg, Virginia. He will be accompanied with his choir and congregation. Dinner will be served following our 10 o'clock a.m. service and upon their arrival. The 28th of September, Seniors Recognition Breakfast, 9 o'clock a.m. It's for all Neves Coast seniors and they can bring one guest to attend the breakfast to honor them. Uh, the theme, Elders Build a Foundation for Our Youth, based on 1 Peter 5 and 1. Seniors are members that are 60 years old and older. Ministers of NAPSCO of all ages are invited to attend. Uh, if you need more information, just contact one of the missionary ministries, and please let her know. O.C. Uh, Fur is the person who's trying to get all the RSVPs. So if you plan to attend, please let her know today. But the deadline to RSVP is 22 September. The 6th of October is a hospitality ministry 10th year anniversary. They will be celebrated in a 10 o'clock a.m. service. They invite you to celebrate this important milestone with them. 
The theme is timeless and timely, based on Hebrews 13 and 2. Minister Derek Wood would be the guest minister. Lunch will be served following the service. And also, Sister Pat Summers would like for you to let her know if you plan to attend. 12th of October, annual choir day service, 3 o'clock p.m. Uh, our choir, our mass choir, will be celebrating, and they have invited our sisters' churches to come out with them as well to celebrate their annual day. As I know I say every Sunday, that there was a lot of information I just provided to you. And that's why we encourage you to go out on the church website, look through your email, and look at the weekly events, because everything I said here, in addition to other churches' activities, will be posted there. At this time, we would like to acknowledge our first-time visitors. If we have anyone here in the congregation, first-time worshiping with us, would you please stand? First-time visitors. Amen. Someone from the hospitality ministry is going to come to you. And will you please give us your name and your church affiliation? Hi, my name is Patricia Brawley. I come from um, Upper Marlboro, Maryland, Providence, St. John Baptist Church. I'm just moved to this area, so I'm looking for new churches. Mm -hmm. Roll by and said, that looked like a nice church, so I came in. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. My name is Rosalind Barr. <coughs> with uh, Refreshing Springs Baptist Church in Riverdale, Maryland. Today with my best friend, Denise. Uh, I fellowship with her along with many of you at the retreat over the weekend. And I had a wonderful time. Wonderful time. As a matter of fact, I'm looking forward to the next one that you plan to sponsor. Thank you for having me. This is my friend Juwan and He just decided to um, come today. <clears throat> See, when you got something good, you want to share it with your friends. Amen. And look how young they starting out. And the sister who said that she's just moved in the area, well, guess what? God is your GPS. Amen. And we hope and pray he'd redirect you back to us again. Amen. And as always, please, please, uh, we just, when we have our, our greet and meet, Pastor Space and First Lady just want to have an opportunity to shake your hand, come forth in front of the pulpit area so they can welcome you to the Amsco Baptist Church. And you know, here at the Amsco Baptist, uh, we have something called a mother's ministry, and that's females who are 70 years or older. And we try to acknowledge them throughout the year with different things, but their birthdays is one of them. And I know she's been ill, she's not here, but uh, Bernice Moss is celebrating her birthday in the month of September. So Shalonda, would you please come forth so I can hand it to you? And we can sing, anybody else who had a birthday in the month of September, would you please stand? September birthday honorees. <laughs> As always, please remember to pray for the sick and the shut-in.
bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. That's John 6 and 33. Jesus Christ is the bread of life, and without him, you will spiritually starve. Just like we can't live without bread or water, we cannot live eternally without Jesus Christ. He is the only one that can give you that true soul satisfaction, both here in this life and eternally. So I encourage you, go. Go to Jesus Christ and never go hungry again. Believe in him and never thirst. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week when I bring you another vision statement from Pastor Steve. Let's give God some praise today. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, give him praise. Come on, bless him. I know he has been good. Hallelujah. Come on, bless him like he's real. Hallelujah. If you are blessed, just raise your hand and tell him I'm blessed by the best. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you on today. You may take your seats. Amen. I know the women ought to be on fire today. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're coming down, amen, from that mountaintop. You ought to be glowing, amen, with the glory of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. And we are just so excited for you today. Amen. I know you had a wonderful time. First Lady was texting me all weekend long saying how great the retreat was. Amen. 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 So I am excited for you, and I'm so happy that this was a retreat for you. Amen. You know, today we have uh, the speaker of the retreat, um, uh, Michelle Townsend. Amen. She's going to come to us again. She's not a stranger to us, amen. She's been here before, amen. So we're just welcoming her, welcoming her back one more time to, to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Children's Church, pre-K to fifth grade, you are dismissed. Children's Church, pre-K to fifth grade, you are dismissed. The nursery is open. Amen. Those who have babies in your arms and you're not carrying them to the nursery, you can go to our choir room to our right and you can nurse your baby in there and watch the service, amen, while you're in there. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, men, we are getting ready to go to our retreat on Friday. Amen. And uh, I hope you heard what Sister Corbin said, that we're going to meet downstairs in the conference room. Very briefly, we just want to set the agenda Make sure we got all of our logistics together and all those things, amen, to ensure that we also will have a wonderful retreat. You know, our ministers are, are teaching, including myself, Reverend King, Reverend Babur, Reverend Sanders, one of my sons coming back from Fayetteville and his pastor, uh, Reverend Mike, amen. So we are expecting a wonderful, wonderful retreat. It's a beautiful place, isn't it? Amen, amen. And so we're going to go in and enjoy it also next weekend. And just like we prayed for you, ladies, pray for us, amen, amen, as we go and celebrate what the Lord Jesus Christ is doing in our lives. Amen. amen. Is there anybody in the house blessed today? <laughs> Hallelujah. If you are blessed, won't you stand to your feet, hug a neighbor's neck, tell them that you love them. This is our meet and greet. First time visitors, please come to the front of the church. First Lady Spates and I would like to shake your hand.
Amen, amen. As we come to order, hallelujah, I know the greeting is wonderful, the love is being shared, amen, but let us come to order, amen. Sister Peggy Bailey, Sister Peggy Bailey is going to come up now and give us a brief update of uh, the retreat on yesterday. After that, the officers will come and they're going to lead us in the giving of our tithes, our pleasures, and our offerings. Sister Bailey? All right. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Good morning, church. And praise the Lord. Whew, let me tell you, this weekend... Ooh, I got to take a deep breath because I was just telling Reverend Townsend my feet are still floating on the floor. I don't even feel like I'm walking. I think the spirit is still just carrying me. I had a wonderful time, church. It was my first experience, and God, I know it's not going to be the last. So what I got out of transform, not conform, I had to write it down as an acronym because when I tell you, the T for me stands for touch my soul. Amen. The R, it felt like a revival. Oh, yeah. I took the A and I said it was so much affection and love in the place. I did that in, I said, this is the new beginning for me. Yeah. And I took that S and I said, you know what? It's spiritually sacred. Yeah. That moment in there, I never wanted it to end. And I took that F and I was like, well, you know, it's just so much fun. I can't think of another F to say. It was just so much fun. And then the O was omnipresence. I mean, the spirit of God was there, left, right, center. You, I just felt like I was a new creature in Christ all over again. Amen. And the R, it felt like renewing of the mind. All right. And the M was mind-blowing. Yes. And then the E, well, it was exhilarating, church. Right. It was exhilarating. And when I get to the D, I got delivered. All right. You know? It was deliverance from my heart. It was deliverance for me. Woo. Woo. It was deliverance. And my favorite quote that I can probably not go say it the way Reverend Townsend said it, but I think I got it. It says, you have to move if you want to see some change. You got to move. And all I can say is thank you for this opportunity because, Lord, I cannot wait for next year. I cannot wait for the years to come or whenever you have another one. So thank you all for this opportunity. It was great.
that you've blessed us with spirits to give. For your word said it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Now, God, receive these, our offerings, our pledges, our tithes. We lift them up to you, O God, that your son, Jesus Christ, may be glorified. Bless the hands that gave. Bless the hands that could not and did not. And we thank you once again for church-going minds and the ability to give unto your kingdom. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Let us all say together, amen. God bless you for your giving. God bless those who could not and did not give. The men will come and bless us with a song, and we shall be led an altar call prayer by Reverend Cynthia Thompson Hill. How y'all doing this morning, church? <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, um, like I said, every time I could get up here to sing, you know, I'm always a little nervous. Somebody well, told me, though, that that's just the Lord working in you. You, know, you don't want to get up here and be overconfident and think you know what you're doing. None of us know what we're doing. Um, you know, we, all, we all struggle at doing things. We all have our trials and tribulations. We all go through things. But with the Lord's help, we can do anything. And, and Try to sing this morning. So, um, my voice ain't what it used to be. He can't get as high as I used to be when I was younger, but I'm gonna try to sing it anyway, though. And, uh, and, and the Lord can help me too, though, just like He helped everybody else. So, we're gonna try to sing this here. The help of these, these brothers right here. Gotcha. <laughs> Oh, but you made 
clouds crumble, but they were so wrong. You held my hand and encouraged me to stand. When they said I couldn't do it, I heard you say, You said yes, you can. Thought that I'd be weak, oh. but you made me strong. Thought that I would crumble, but they were so wrong. You held my hand, yeah. encouraged me to stand. When they said I couldn't do it, I heard you say, You said yes, you can. I overcame, no. Oh. Every day I'm getting stronger. You said yes, you can. No longer doubting. No. You said yes, you can. It's my time to tell somebody. God said yes, you can. I overcame. No. You said yes, you can. And every day I'm getting stronger. Somebody God said yes you can we are in Christ in the end we win all of us can triumph over the enemy why because we're on the right road now amen and because we're on the right road now we're transformed and being transformed how by the renewing of our minds amen that even though we're in the world, we're not of the world. And we don't have to be conformed to this way of life. Amen? 
But we can and we will triumph over the enemy. And because of that, it's praying time. Amen. It's praying time. The word says to pray without ceasing. Amen. And when we come together in corporate prayer, amen, ain't no devil in hell can touch us. Amen. So all of you come together in corporate prayer. Come to the altar. The ministers are here to anoint you. And if you can't make your way or won't make your way to the altar, just stand in agreement of the word that we're going to triumph over the enemy. Amen. Yes, you can. I know you can. And I know you will. Amen. By his stripes, we're healed. And all sickness is not unto death. Amen. We got a renewed spirit. We got rejuvenated minds. We've got the option to go on and see what the end is going to be. Amen. Some of us have found our strength because we know that there's strength in numbers. So if we stand together, united in the word, what a ministry that this branch of Zion can produce. Amen. Hallelujah. We just want to come together and triumph over the enemy. Amen. Amen. There's still room. Amen. Is still room. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just thank you in this moment right now, God, for changed minds. Hallelujah. For changed hearts. Hallelujah. For those that stand in agreement. Hallelujah. For those that stand on their faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Amen. We stand in agreement for those that see a way out now when you thought there was no way out. Amen. Let us go to the throne of grace. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we humbly come before you, Lord God, in the humblest manner in which we know how, Lord God, saying by our ways and our actions, oh, that we truly want a closer walk with you. We thank you, Lord God, for the going down of the sun, and we thank you, O oh God, for the rising of the same. And then, Lord God, when we did rise up on this morning with your outstretched hand, of tender compassion, we arose with a reasonable portion of life, health, and strength that was enough to give the first thank you, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, that you gave us a mind to come out to your house of worship on this morning, Lord God. Lord, realizing that we can't do anything without you, oh God, and that we needed to assemble with the saints, Lord God, so that we could be strengthened so that we could be renewed, Lord God, so that we could continue to be transformed, oh God. Because you said in your word, Lord God, that if we stand on the word, Lord God, hallelujah, that they, you've given us a road map, that everything under the sun, Lord God, is within that road map, which is our Bible, Lord God. 
And we thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to not only to read, but to study and to be able to apply it to our daily lives, oh God. And we just come, Lord God, for continued lessons of application, oh God, how we can apply the word so that we could draw all men unto you, Lord God, so that you could be that light within these vessels of our bodies, oh God, that someone may come saying, I yield, I yield. What must I do to be saved, oh God? Lord God, we come thanking you and we come calling on your holy and righteous name, Lord God, because there's not any name that we can call on that can do a dying soul any good. So we come calling on your holy and righteous name, oh God. We come saying, fill us up, Lord God. Fill us up, Lord God, till there's an overflow, Lord God, that we can come out of what we consider generational curses, oh God, that by your stripes we're healed, oh God. By your stripes, oh God, we're delivered, oh God. By your stripes, oh God, no more strongholds. By your stripes, oh God, there is a deliverance. By your stripes, oh God, Families are united by your stripes, oh God. We can walk in your will and in your way by your stripes, oh God. We operate in overflow and not in lack, oh God, because you said, hallelujah, the cattle on a thousand hills belong to you. And I'm so thankful that the hill even belong to you too because I can look to the hills from which cometh my help. Hallelujah. Knowing all of my help, all of my help comes from you and you alone. So I just come standing, Lord God, with outstretched hands before you, oh God, asking that you fill me up, oh God. I come with an expectancy, oh God. You promised me in your word that you would take care of me. And I come holding you at your word, oh God. If I need peace of mind, oh God, I know you can give it to me because you've allowed me to lay my head on your breast. Breathe my life out sweetly there. What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege and thank you, oh God, to bring everything to you in prayer. So we thank you, we magnify you, and we glorify your name, oh God. And Lord God, as we go back to our respective seats, as we go back to our respective homes, as we go back on our jobs, oh God, as we go into conversation with our children, as we go into fellowship with our spouses, oh God, we can reflect on this day and say that it was good to have been in the house of the Lord. And we ask, oh God, that you bless the ties that bind all of our hearts in Christian love, oh God. Let your spirit run from heart to heart and from breast to breast, oh God, that we may be humble and that we may be prepared for the word that's about to come forth, Lord God, because we know that this day was ordained from the very foundation of the world. Strengthen the speaker, oh God, Crown her from the top of her head to the sole of her feet, Lord God. Let us stand boldly before you and declare your word as you've given it unto her, Lord God. And so we go back to our seats. We consider it done. We claim it in the name of Jesus. We say in your name, Lord God. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you in the name of Jesus. You didn't forsake me. In the name of Jesus, you love me. In the name of Jesus, you deliver me. In the name of Jesus, we consider it all. Hallelujah, amen, and amen. Hallelujah.
Amen. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Thank you, men. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for that fervent prayer, Amen. Minister Hill. And right now, if you prepare your hearts for our speaker today, uh, Reverend Michelle Townsend. She's a mighty woman of God, spirit-filled. And I know that God has dipped her down into his well of wisdom, and she's about to pour us out a blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. Amen. So hear ye, Minister Tice, a Townsend. Amen. All right. The apps go. Let me see the hands of those that God has done something for. Okay, I see a few hands missing. So those of you that God has not done anything for, let me see you stand up. I don't see nobody stand up. So we know that God has blessed us. It's all right. So come on, stand up. Give God some praise up in here. Give y'all something to run and tell about. Has the Lord done anything for you? Come on, sing, y'all.
next time you're on the telephone, you talk to your friend. Want to give them something to talk about? Tell them, run and tell them that. That God is good. Is it good? God done anything for anybody. You can raise your hand and give them praise. Oh, he's more than worthy. Make me want to run. Make me want to run. Anybody feel like they want to run? But run on! good God. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's a good God. He's a good God. 
I need you to get that in your spirit. He's a good God. He's a good God. He kept you. He's a good God. He provided for you. He's a good God. He didn't let it happen. He's a good God. He did let it happen. He's a good God. In it all and through it all, he's just a good God. I don't know what you come to do, but anytime I gather in his place, anytime I see somebody, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So whether you participate or not, I'm still going to give him the justice he's due. Somebody needs to settle that, that no matter what I'm facing today, I'm going to praise the Lord because I understand my praise terrifies the enemy. So whatever you're facing today, I want you to know that if you open your mouth and praise him, the enemy got to back up off you. That's your victory. If you don't get anything else today, if you open your mouth and praise the Lord, the Bible says that the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. What that means is he comes and he sits in your presence. And everything that was wrong becomes right. Everything that was coming against you has to put a pause on it. So, God, we bless you and we gather in this place because you are good. And your mercy endures and lasts forever. Come on and put your hands together for God one more time. Come on and celebrate like you know who he is. We are so grateful, so grateful, so grateful to be here one more time. We give all praise, honor, and glory to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God, we invite you all the way in. We are standing here on your promises. God, we give you praise and honor. Come on and celebrate your pastor, your chief dreamer. Come on here. Give him some praise for his steadfastness, for his faithfulness, for being the shepherd of this flock that he is. Come on, for laboring for you, give him some praise for carrying you. We honor you. We give God glory for you. God bless you to your beautiful, 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 beautiful wife, beautiful wife, first lady. I love her. Oh my gosh, I love her. Give her some love. I love her at her core. She's just good stuff. She's a virtuous woman. She took care of the ladies this weekend. If you ever want to know how a first lady loves her people, women of God, you know. Because she took real, real, real good care of us this weekend. Come on and show her some love. God, restore unto her a hundredfold for everything that she pulled out. I give God praise for each and every one of you that you didn't leave when you saw your, your pastor wasn't bringing a word today. Come on and celebrate yourself. Because you all know what church folk do. Don't I? Oh, oh they ain't tell y'all what we done this week, did they? They should have gave y'all heads up. My assignment is to set the captives free. To this men choir, you don't know how you bless me. Come on and celebrate the men of God. It is exciting to see the men of God. And I got to tell you, I'm equally excited because back at home today at D. St. Paul's Baptist Church, our men are singing. And I'm going to tell you, when the men sing, they lay it down just like y'all do. <laughs> so I am grateful to see men of God in the house. Come on and celebrate them. I, I do bring you greetings from D. St. Paul's Baptist Church by... Uh, by way of my pastor, Dr. Lance Dean Watson, and my beautiful First Lady Rose Watson, he extends to you blessings upon this house. There is a word from the Lord, amen? amen. I do want to acknowledge my family and thank them for counting out robbery to carry, haha, <laughs> ladies, this weight and this responsibility. To my husband, I know all y'all think y'all got good husbands, but he the bomb diggly. He is all that and a bag of chips. So I'm grateful that he is not intimidated by my anointing. I'm grateful that he pushes me into my purpose and my destiny. 
I'm grateful that even when I don't want to, he said, baby, God, I say yes. Do you hear me? So I'm grateful for his ministry to me and with me and for his covering to my baby girls. They ain't babies and the more they're taller than I am, but they always be my babies. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you to Bobby. Thank you for, he took off from his job. He works at the good church and they let him off today. Come on and give God some praise to my family, please. There is a word, there is a word today from the Gospel of Luke, from the Gospel of Luke, New Testament. If you have your word, turn with me. Matthew, Mark, Luke, the fifth chapter, and I'll be reading verses 17 through 26. That's the Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. If you're there, say amen. If you're not, say hold on. Ooh, y'all fast. I love it. That means y'all stay in the word. <laughs> and it reads, the word of God for the people of God. One day as he was teaching, Pharisees and the teachers of the law who had come from every village and from Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Some men came carrying a paralytic on a mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. When they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd, right in front of Jesus. When Jesus saw their faith, he said, son, your sins are forgiven. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus knew what they were thinking and asked, hmm, why are you thinking these in your heart? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiving or to say, get up and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up. Take your mat and go home. Hmm. Verse 25, immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been laying on, and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave God praise. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Let us pray. And now, oh God, we pause once again to say thank you. God, we ask now that you would rain fresh down on us, oh God. God, release your anointing, oh God, that breaks every yoke, Lord God. God, release into this atmosphere a spirit of praise and worship, Lord God. God, your word holds to enter into your presence, Lord God. So God, we come boldly before the throne of grace now, oh God. God, we ask that you would use every part of me, oh God, from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, and from the soles of my feet to the crown of my head. God, I withhold nothing, oh God, that we might be set free. God, have your way in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. As you take your seat, tell your neighbor, will the real church rise up? Tell your neighbor, will the transformed church rise up? And one more time for the Holy Ghost, will the transformed church rise up? Ladies, bear with me and say take two. The church, since its inception, has endured suffering and persecution. Over the course of the last several decades, we've experienced what I would say an increased scrutiny. Scrutiny over what we do, why we do it, how we do it, and with whom we do it with. Can I get an amen? amen. Scrutiny over our affiliations with our partnership. Scrutiny over how we communicate and how we take care of each other. Scrutiny over how we conduct business and manage our finances. Scrutiny on every side and from every angle. And if we're honest on today and do some individual and collective reflection, we've had to admit that some of it is self-inflicted. Some of it is self-inflicted. We've knowingly or unknowingly taken on a lot of the characteristics and the ways of the world. We've lost our distinction, we've lost our contrast, and we've lost our differentiator. We have, in our best efforts, 
to win the world, we become like the world. In our truest attempt to reach the world, we become like the world. We've lost our distinction. Hmm. We've tarnished our identity, the church. Oh, it's going to be tight, but it's going to be right. Paul warned us and admonished us in Romans 12, too, when he instructed us, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. In other words, don't let the world dictate and influence what we do and how we do it. Instead, let us influence what the world does and how the world does it. Don't allow the world and the world's ways to influence us. Instead, let us influence the world of God's ways. We are not to conform to the patterns, behaviors, and customs of this world. We are to become transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can impact and share the love of Jesus with the world. See, my assignment today is to issue an assignment. It's to issue a summons. It's to sound an alarm, to release a clarion call for the transformed church to rise up. Not the conformed church, but the transformed church. A church whose mind is stayed on Jesus. A church whose mind is constantly renewed by the words of Jesus. A church who stays in the face of Jesus. This is a transformed church that God is seeking and summoning today. Not a church that's constantly looking for his hand, but a church that's hungry for his presence. A church that seeks the presence of God. A church that seeks the face of God. A church that seeks to understand, apply, and live the word of God. A church that seeks to be transformed by the power of God. Will the transformed church rise up? You see, transformation is an inward work. You can't be transformed until you get in the presence of God. And you get in the presence of God with the word of God, he, the Holy Spirit will wash your mind and transform your mind and scrub your mind so that you no longer think like the world, but you begin to have the mind of Christ. Philippians 2, 5 said, let this mind be in you. In you, that's also in Christ Jesus. So I hear you asking and I hear you thinking, uh, okay, Ra Michelle, I hear you. I hear you talking about this transformed church and that God is calling and summoning us today. So what's the difference between who we are now and who God desires us to be? What's the contrast and the distinction between a conformed church and a transformed church? And I'm so glad you asked. Thank you so much. Because the text makes it very clear. Come with me in the text. The first thing the text teaches us is that the conformed church is sitting and the transformed church is carrying. The conformed church is sitting and the transformed church is carrying. I'm in the text, Luke 5, verse 17. One day as he was teaching... Pharisees and teachers of the law who had come from every village in Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem were sitting there. They packed the house. And the power of the Lord was present for him to heal the sick. Verse 18, some men came carrying a paralytic on a mat and tried to get him into the house to lay him before Jesus. Let me unpack this text and do some introductions. You see, as I realize, many of you may have not met or been acquainted with the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. You see, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were legalistic and separatistic groups who strictly reinforced the laws of Moses and the unwritten traditions. They had meticulous rules and regulations to govern their daily lives. You can't do this and you can't do that. You have to do this and you have to do that. And to their defense, because I do believe in order, I do believe in serving God in a spirit of excellence. I believe they had good positive intent. They were attempting to get the Jews to live righteously before God in a world that was changing drastically. Can somebody say amen? 
They were trying to help them by strongly reinforcing external behaviors without any inward connection. Transformation does not take place outside in. Confirmation does. When you conform to the world, you do what you see with your physical eyes. And to give respect where respect is due, they were professionally trained, educated scholars of the law. Education is a wonderful thing. They knew the law, and they trained and taught others of the law, and they were determined to hold everyone accountable to the law except themselves. <laughs> they knew the law inside out, could quote it inside, upside, every side you had. If you had any questions about the law, they could recite it like they were saying the ABCs. But there was a problem with the Pharisees and the elders of the law. Was they studied and they memorized the information, but they did not have a revelation of the information. They knew the information, but they didn't have a revelation. They were consumed with external behaviors and enforcing those behaviors. However, because all they had was information, when Jesus, the manifested revelation of the information showed up, they got all twisted. Because they spent all their time memorizing the word and not knowing the word. See, they had invested all of their time on legalistic, literal applications of the law that they totally missed who the law is. They knew about God, but they didn't know God. You do know that's possible. That you can know about God and not know God. You can, script, you can quote every scripture from Genesis to Revelations and not have a relationship with God. You want to know how you know? Look around. How do our behaviors reflect that we know God? Because their lens were so focused on external behaviors, the legalistic aspects of the law and conforming to the traditions that were passed down, they put people in bondage. Did y'all know the law could put you in bondage? We have all these rituals and traditions. What do they mean? How do they align with the gospel? And some of them are good. Some of them mean something. But sometimes we just put stuff in place to control people. That is not the will of God for the church. Because whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So they had no revelation of the law. And I see them, that they were, they were sitting in the house. Sitting in the house, taking up space. Sitting in the house, critiquing every word of Jesus. Instead of realizing that the manifestation and the revelation of the law was standing before them. You see, I, I, know, I know you all don't know any modern day Pharisees and teachers of the law. But it might be some in some other churches. Do, do you know any Pharisees that show up on Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Bible study, or Thursday choir rehearsal? We see them, they come in all pomp and circumstantial, taking their seat, and they just sit. They sit critiquing what everybody has on. Come on, sisters. They sit critiquing the worship leader. They sit critiquing the prayer. They sit critiquing the songs. Does anybody know any modern-day Pharisees? They sit critiquing Pastor Sermon, try to do what he does. They sit, they're just sitting, full of information with no revelation, taking up space. Hmm. They're sitting, <laughs> trying to reinforce and make everyone else conform to rules and regulations that they themselves don't keep nor obey. They possess a form of godliness, but deny the power within. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm a little bit, because if they're sitting beside you, just look straight ahead. Look at me. Look at me. If they're sitting beside you, look straight ahead. 
because I ain't trying to start anything today. Well, yes, I am, actually. Because God desires for you and I to have a revelation, a revelation of the information. He desires us to walk in power and be set free. But if you're stuck in your traditions, if you're stuck in the way it used to be, how can you move into what God is calling you to? If all you're doing is what you've been doing, how are you going to walk into what God is calling you to? If you're trying to keep Pastor boxed into yesterday and God done impregnated him for the future, how are you going to get there? He wants us to have information and allow the Holy Spirit to provide illumination so that we can receive a revelation and submit ourselves for transformation. I'm going to say that one more time. God desires for us to have information and allow the Holy Spirit to provide illumination so that we receive a revelation and submit ourselves for transformation. This is not a microwave process. All the word with no illumination makes you a wise fool. Knowing the Bible from A to Z and you acting up on Sunday. Information with no revelation. Praising and worship one minute and rolling our eyes the next minute. Information without revelation. God wants us to be transformed. He is calling for the transformed church to rise up. And you know, and I love God. I love God so much because I realize that when we're in transformation, we got to get in God's presence. And I know y'all don't want to hear this, but in God's presence is the fullness of everything. Which means I get excited and he ministers to me, but he corrects me too. He's not infatuated about my emotions. He wants me whole. He wants me well. So I can go up and worship. But in my worship, there's some correction. Because I desire to be everything that God wants me to be. At the retreat this weekend, when you go into the presence of God, he sees all of you. A retreat is when we draw back from the world and we press into God. That means, God, we want you to transform us inside out. Because there are some things in us that only God can do. There are some things in us that only God can work out. No matter how we dress it up on Sunday, no matter what you put on, you got to get it from the presence of God so that you can walk in the power and be transformed to the image. So it's God's desire for us not to be conformed, but for us to be transformed. And he showed us that the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, ah, they can be conformed. But he also shows us in his text what transformed men look like. Hmm. In the text, he says some men. God, I'm glad y'all singing today. He says some men, no names, no titles, no accolades. The text just says some men. Hmm. And if I had time, i hang out just a little while. Because sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes our titles get us twisted. It calls us to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. Sometimes our titles get us twisted. Sometimes, but not all the times, our titles and our positions cause us to trip up and deceive ourselves because we think we know more than what we actually do. Sometimes our titles cause us to stumble and fall because we forget our names. They can't even call me Michelle because I'm Reverend such and such with no power. I'm Deaconess such and such. You don't even know your name. Because your title done tripped you up. What your mama call you? <laughs> we 
when you go in the presence of God, what he call you? I am a friend of God. He knows my name. But the text says, the text says some men. It says some men came carrying hmm, a paralytic on a mat and tried to take him to the house to lay him before Jesus. These men were not sitting, they were carrying. They were not sitting, they were doing. They were out in the streets taking care of others and carrying them to meet Jesus. These men were out fishing for those who were sick and carrying them to meet the great physician. These men were out lifting someone who could not walk and carrying him to Jesus. These men were out moving the stuck and the paralyzed and carrying them to Jesus. These men had received a revelation of the information. And here's what I know for myself. When you receive a revelation of the information, you just can't sit anymore. You can't sit when you receive a revelation. You can sit when you only have information. You got to move. You, you got to go do something. You got to go to the highways and the byways. You got to help somebody. You got to tell somebody. You got to feed somebody. You got to bring somebody. You got to carry somebody to Jesus. These men, these men, like the Pharisees, have received the information, but they had experienced an inward illumination. They produced an outward manifestation that they could not keep to themselves. That's why your praise, my praise is radical. Because I got a revelation of the information of this word. And God has illuminated it. So I can't keep it to myself. I got to go tell somebody. I got to run and tell the world about it. About a risen Savior and what he's done. It compelled, it compelled them on the inside to go and do something. You can always tell whenever somebody's been transformed. You can always tell when someone has, has had an inward encounter. You can always tell when someone has had an inner connection because they're never the same. <laughs> There's an internal fire that propels us even when we get tired. There's a fire first lady that causes us to press through the adversary, that causes us to press in the name of Jesus because there's an assignment that needs to be completed. There's fire on the inside that pushes us even when we're tired and frustrated, even when you don't got on our last nerve in Jesus' name. There's a fire, there's a gratitude that says, freely I have given He's given unto us that we shall give to one another. So God is calling us to be a transformed church, not a conformed church. God is calling us out of self-righteous seats and sending us to go get some paralyzed, some, para some folks who are paralyzed, some, so some folk who are stuck, some folk who's been doing the same old thing the same old way for how many years, some folks who's struggling with the same old stuff, you ain't got to go far. Look around you. You can be stuck sitting in church. Yes, you can. You can get used to the same old, same old. You can come in and offer the same old praise. You can come here and watch pastor week after week. And he preaching his heart out the word of God. And you ain't being transformed. Because you're too busy watching for every A he missed and every I he missed. If you catch the T's and the he's, you'll be delivered. God is calling us to carry them before Jesus. Not before man. Not, be, not, not before your friend and your prayer meeting so y'all can gossip about them. The mandate they had was to carry them before Jesus. So what you talking about? You talking to Jesus? About your sister and your brother? Transformed church? Are you the conformed church? 
where you talking to everybody, telling everybody's business. God's called us to be the transformed church. That season is over because this should be a safe space. I'm not quite sure understanding. I'm not quite sure understanding we're operating like the world operates, where we're handling each other the way the world handles each other. That's not the transformed church of God. God loves us. And he wants us to love each other. He wants us to protect each other and care for each other. Come on, come on and put your hands together. I know it's tight. I know it's tight. But that's what transformation is. Transformation ain't going to shout you every minute of the day. Transformation will cause you to look in the mirror and deal with some stuff. Because he loves us. God says he loves because those whom he corrects, he loves. If you ain't getting a correction, I don't know who you talking to. God is calling us to be the transformed church. He's calling us to be the transformed church. So the text not only teaches us, and I promise I'll let you go, that the conformed church is sitting and the transformed church is carrying, but the text also teaches us that the conformed church is thinking, hmm, and the transformed church is praising. The conformed church is thinking, and the transformed church is praising. I promise you I'm in the text. This is after Jesus has healed the man. And in verse 21, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law began thinking to themselves, who is this fellow who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Information but no revelation. Jesus knew where the, what they were thinking and asked, what are you thinking? Why are you thinking these in your heart? What is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? Who cannot celebrate your paralyzed brother and sister being healed? Who cannot celebrate your stuck brother and sister being moved? The transformed church. God is calling us to be the transformed church. And the text says that he, the paralyzed man, he said, I tell you to get up, take your mat and go home. Verse 5, 25, immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been laying on and went home praising God. Everyone was amazed and gave praise but the conformed church. The conformed church was thinking and the transformed church was praising. The Pharisees could not get their praise on because of their legalistic mindset and traditions. They were stuck and paralyzed in their beliefs, their traditions, and their customs. Their minds were conformed to the legalistic words of the law, that they missed the manifestation of the law that was standing before them. Mm. They were sick in their minds. Because sometimes we think sickness is only physical. We're sick. That's why we come here. This is a hospital for the sick. Some of us have different ailments. Some of us are sick in our bodies. Some of us are sick in our minds. Some of us are sick in our souls. Don't fake. Because suicide takes place in the church. The problem is we come here and we won't get before the altar. We won't get before the king. We won't carry each other to the king and lay him in his presence. They were sick in their minds. Their minds needed healing. <laughs> they were bound in their minds. They could not praise God because they did not know God the healer. They were front and center in the house. Prime seeks every Sunday in the midst of the great physician and did not know it. They did not receive their healing because they were bound up in their minds. They didn't receive their healing because they were stuck on traditions and customs that put them in bondage. They were too busy trying to say, who is he? 
it's the he that you've been reading and studying about that you don't have a revelation about. That's who the he is. All those hours you spend in small groups and discussions, and he is in front of you, and you're talking about only he can do that. He is in front of you. If only he can do it and he didn't done it, then he is who he is. See, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible thing to be in the house every Sunday and the transforming power of God is here to heal you and you choose not to receive it and remain sick. It's here. The power is available. But you got to receive it. You got to be sick and tired and sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired of doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. That's your mind. Your mind needs to be renewed. And guess what? The world can't do it. The world can't deliver you. The world can't save you. God wants us to be healed, to be made whole. The transforming power of God that heals is a power that makes us whole. It's not limited to one form of ailment or the other. Because the text said, he said to him, son, your sins are forgiven. He healed him spiritually. His deepest need was he need to be forgiven. Somebody needs to accept God's forgiveness. Then he healed his body. He was whole, y'all. God don't halfway do anything. He doesn't. He operates in wholeness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in other words, regardless of the type of sickness we have that we're struggling with, Jesus can heal us. It's not limit. There is no limit in Jesus. Have you ever encountered a Pharisee in the house? Have you ever seen a Pharisee praising? Hmm. Have you ever met a teacher of the law with his arms raised? Perhaps a Pharisee probably says, that's not proper pulpit etiquette, Reverend Michelle. It doesn't take all that. We should, be, we should govern ourselves accordingly to the house of the Lord. And I want you to know that I agree a hundred, a thousand, a million percent with him. And I govern myself accordingly, accordingly to who he is in me, <laughs> according to what he's done for me. He is the great physician. He is the one who healed me. He is the one who made me whole. That's why I praise him. That's why I clap my hands. That's why I do my dance. That's why I scream and shout. I praise him accordingly to who he is to me. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what he is to you. I, I don't know who he is to you. I don't know what he's done for you. All I know is what he's done for me. And when I look back where he brought me from, my hands go up, my mouth comes open, and I say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, God. Thank you, God. So if you ever wonder where my stand is, if you ever wonder if I'm on the conform side or the transform side, let me tell you, I'm a sold out believer. Let me show you I raise my hands. I open my mouth. So I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for being here today. But before I go, can I tell you something? God's been good to me. He's been good to me. I know my time is up, but I gotta tell you, I serve a real, 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 real God. I gotta give him praise. I gotta give him glory. I gotta tell you that he healed me, that he restored me, that he delivered me, that he is the King of Kings, that he is the Lord of Lords. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the bright and morning star. He's my lily of the valley. He's my yes. He's my yes. He's my yes. He's my all in all. I gotta praise him. I gotta praise him. I gotta praise him. I gotta praise him. He's been good. He's been good. He's made a way. 
He's healed my daddy. He's provided a way. He's been good. He's been good. Let the redeemed of the Lord say he's been good. He's been good. He's been good, Pastor. He's been good. I praise him. He's been good. I've been transformed. He's been good. I'm not what I used to be. He's been good. He's been good. I've been transformed. I've been in his presence. I've committed myself to be in the transformed church. I walk right. I live right. I get in his presence. I let him work on me. I let him work through me. I'm committed to be the transformed church. I need a transformed church to make some noise in this place. I need some transformed church to walk accordingly to the power of God that's within you. There's healing here today. There's deliverance here today. There's a God here today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Are there any transformed believers in this place? Is there any transformed believers in this place? I ain't talking about a happy praise. I'm talking about a praise on the inside of you that makes you want to run. A praise on the inside of you that makes you want to dance. I got to tell it. I got to tell it. Everywhere I go, I got to tell it. He's my all in all. He's my all in all. I don't know what it is to you, but he's my all in all. And because he's my all in all, I'm going to give him my all in all. I'm going to give him all I have. I'm going to tell everybody I see. Everywhere I go, you're going to know who he is. He is my king. He is my savior. He is my everything. Come on and give God a praise in this house. Oh, come on, come on, stand to your feet, open up your mouths, and tell the Lord, thank you, thank you, hallelujah. Will the transformed church stand up and give your God some praise? I will receive the revelation. I will not be conformed. Hallelujah. Oh, didn't she preach? Hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord. Come on, praise him. Give him praise. He's worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, he's working on the inside. For he's an inside job worker. Hallelujah. Transformation is an inside job. Hallelujah. We thank God, amen, for the woman of God. Give God some praise for Reverend Michelle Townsend. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless God today. Amen, amen, amen. Woman, I, I know you had a good time at the retreat. <laughs> thank God, amen, for Reverend Townsend. May the Lord fill her up and give her more revelation that the manifestation She'll be in the transformed church. Anybody in your transformation right now? I, I, I'm not being conformed. I'm being transformed. I'm changing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We praise God. Amen. For the message. Amen. And the messenger. Hallelujah. Give God some more praise for Reverend Thompson. Bless the Lord. Officers, please come up and stand before the church. Hallelujah. I know we all were touched today. We all received revelation. But perhaps there's someone today and you are looking for a church home. 
You've been going from place to place. And God has not given you that revelation of a place to worship. Perhaps the message today has opened up your spirit and your soul and your mind and you're ready now to park yourself here at Neapsco. That the revelation of the manifestation and the illumination of the Holy Ghost may continue in you. The door of the church is open. You may come by ladder, Christian experience, watch, care, or for baptism. Is there one to come? If you're unsaved today, if you're unsaved, you can come right now and give your life to Jesus Christ. Is there one to come? The door is open. Don't leave without a church home. Where are you at? Where are you at? The Lord is speaking to you right now. He's in your right now, transforming you, revealing to you who he is, what he can do in your life. Don't leave without a church home. Where are you at? You can come by ladder, Christian experience, watch, care, or for baptism. Where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at today? Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? Oh, how I love you. Anybody love him today? Anybody love him today? Because he first loved. Anybody love the Lord today? If you love the Lord, raise your hand and say, I love you, Lord. How I the door is open. Hallelujah. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Put your hands together and give God another praise. God bless you. Amen. Uh, CDs for Reverend Townsend's sermon will be available next Sunday for those who desire to purchase a CD. Don't forget, you can view the services on YouTube. Amen. Just go to YouTube and type in the Absco Baptist Church. And the services for today will come up. Amen. Anybody blessed today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been truly blessed. Amen. I'm so happy for the women. Amen. I'm so glad you had a wonderful time. Amen. It just feels good because y'all more than us. Amen. The, the church is, is 75% of women. And when they're happy, can I get a witness? <laughs> If the women are unhappy, we in trouble. But when you're happy, amen, the spirit of the Lord can take hold, amen. And the church will be lifted up from the muck and the mire, amen. Now, men, don't forget, immediately following services, men, we're going to go down to the conference room. We're going to keep you about 15 minutes. We're going to talk about our retreat next week. Make sure we got everything together. So all men who are going to the retreat, all, all men, even if you're not going to the retreat, come down with us. Amen. Maybe we can, we can convince you to go with us. Amen. So all men, we're going to meet in the conference room immediately following services today. Amen. Because we're going on our retreat next weekend. Congratulations, women. Thank you, Reverend Townsend, for a marvelous word. Won't you come back and dismiss us in benediction and prayer. I want to give God one more shout of praise in this place. There's a sweet, 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 sweet spirit in this place. And I know, I know that I know that I know 
that it's the presence of the Lord. God, we are so grateful for all that you have bore witness to in this place today. God, I thank you, oh God, that when we leave this place, oh God, we shall never, ever leave your presence. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, through the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would seal the words that have been deep-seated in us, oh God. God, that you would help us to be the transformed church, Lord God. God, remind us that old things have passed away and all things are being made new in us and through us. God, I thank you for my brother and my sister that this week will be the best week of their lives thus far. God, I pray that miracle signs and wonders shall follow them wherever they go. God, release your anointing upon them, oh God, that when they show up, the light of the world will show up, oh God. God, I thank you for open doors, Lord God. I thank you for promotion and elevation, Lord God. I speak and declare and declare in this place that your ladder shall be greater. God, I thank you for your faithfulness in the lives of your people. God, let your blessing rest upon this house, oh God. God, increase and multiply. God, draw from the north, the south, the east, and the west. God, I thank you that for supernatural financial increases resting on this house, oh God. God, I think there'll be nothing missing and nothing lacking in this house, oh God. God, I thank you that your word lives here, oh God. So God, have your way and honor your word and your people. And God, until we meet again, keep us in your arms. Wrap us in your presence. Let your spirit blow through us, oh God. Let your word marinate on the inside of our beings, oh God. And God, let us be transformed into your image so that the world will see our mighty good God we serve and come saying, what must I do to be saved? In the mighty and master's name of Jesus the Christ, we pray and give you thanks. Amen. 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 And amen. Love on somebody. Love on somebody on your way out and say, I'm committed to be in the transformed church. Tell them I'm committed to be in the transformed church. I'm committed to be in the transformed church. God bless you. Go in peace. Men, let's go downstairs, men. Come on, men. Let's go downstairs. We'll meet you in the conference room. Come on, men. Let's go downstairs. I don't want to keep you long. Oh, 
Let's meet in the conference room downstairs right away. Come on.